In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So today we're going to be talking about Halloween, uh, as we said before. Um, we know Halloween is uh, fast approaching, and a lot of times we have questions about, you know, should we practice this, should we celebrate Halloween or not? And those who are parents know that there's a lot of pressure from our kids that are familiar with Halloween to want to participate in it. And a lot of times, even if maybe we as parents are a little bit uncomfortable with s at least certain aspects of Halloween, we feel you know, like we don't want our kids to be upset. We want our kids to be happy. We don't want to make them feel different than any other kids that they're with in school and so on. And so we tell them, okay, you know, we're going to do it. Uh, that's one group of people. Maybe, maybe a lot of us are fully convinced that it's fine and we participate in it. So um, the idea here is we want to speak about the kind of the, the origin of Halloween, of where did it come from, and how did it morph to become what it is that we practice today and whether it's suitable for us to participate in it or not as Orthodox Christians. Okay, so we go back a long time ago to about 400 BC um, with the Celtic people. Okay, so the Celts were these pagans, um, Indo-European people, and they developed somewhere between 800 and 450 BC. And on November 1st, they would celebrate their new year. Okay, on their new year. And this marked like the end of the summer and the beginning of, of like the winter time. And this transition from like the summertime to the winter time in their culture was a time that was associated with death. Because you can think about maybe uh, like the, the, the plants, like a lot of plants would die. Like, uh, you know, the transition from summer to winter was associated with this human death. And they had a festival that they celebrated during this New Year period, which is spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, but it's pronounced Samhain, right? It's pronounced Samhain, even though it's not spelled like that at all. And they would have one of these feasts every quarter, right? But this feast of Samhain was like the biggest feast that they would celebrate at their New Year. Druids, which were like these Celtic priests, if you want to call them, like Celtic priests, they would build like these large bonfires and people would come and they would offer uh, like sacrifices. They, could, they would burn crops and animals as sacrifices to their deities because they were pagans. So they believed in these different gods. They would come to these fires. They would burn different things as sacrifices to these gods in this like fire festival. Okay, this is this is this feast of Samhain. Um, this is like a reenactment kind of like of what they would do. Um, there are people that continue to practice this today, um, by the way. This isn't just like history. Um, these are people that practice this now. They come and they, they, they do these great bonfires and they do all of these things. Um, even children will do this, right? They'll have a fire and they'll go around and you see kids dressed in costumes and things and then they will go around this fire as like a reenactment and a celebration of the same feast of Samhain uh, that originated with the Celtic people. Okay. So the Celts believed that on this night, which was the new year, the boundary between like the dead and the living become blurred. Like there becomes like a thin separation between the dead and the living on this day. So they believed that um, like there would be ghosts, there would be spirits of the dead that would come and appear on the earth on this day. Okay. Um, and, and this is one of the things that they celebrated in this feast of Samhain. So today, this feast is what we call Halloween. Okay? The, the original feast that developed by the Celtic people is what has morphed slightly into what we call Halloween now. But this is the original uh, origin of why we celebrate on this day and what is the association with death and ghosts and spooky things. Okay? It is because of this Celtic New Year uh, celebration. Okay? Costumes. Why do people wear costumes? So when these spirits would come to the earth, they could attack people, they could possess people, and so people wanted to protect themselves from being attacked. So what they would do is they would dress up as ghosts so that the other real ghosts, when they come to the earth, would think that they are other spirits and would leave them alone. Okay? That is, that is why 
people started to wear these costumes. During the celebration, the Celts wore costumes typically consisting of animal heads and skins. Costumes of ghosts and witches were believed to confuse the spirits so as not to attack or possess the people. Also, it was believed that these goats could come and enter people's houses. So what they would do is they would take bowls of food and they would place it outside their homes so that when the ghosts would come, it's like they would be appeased with the offering and not try to go into the house. Okay, This is practices that the Celtic people did. This is the origin of why we have costumes in Halloween. So this is a modern practice. This is an actual pagan Irish woman who dresses as a witch during this Samhain fire festival. I think this was held in, um, yeah, in Ireland, probably. Um, and people, people wear these costumes, not just as costumes. Like maybe, maybe here in the West, like when somebody dresses up for, as a witch on Halloween, they're doing it like as a fun thing. Like, you know, like it's, just a, it's a fun costume or whatnot. But the original like, reason why people dressed as witches is to keep themselves from being possessed by evil spirits. Like this. So you see how what started out as a very pagan and a very demonic activity, over time, people have kind of like stopped thinking about that origin and have stopped thinking about how this all started. And now it just becomes like a cute little thing that we encourage for kids to do. And we think that it's innocent and fun with nothing bad associated with it. Fortune telling, okay? You've heard of the practice bobbing for apples, right? Bobbing for apples is a practice where you have like a big bucket of water and you put apples in it and you'll just kind of like dunk your head and try to grab an apple with your, with your mouth, right? Okay, it's, it's, it's innocent, right? What is the origin of bobbing for apples? So during this festival, the Samhain festival, the Celts, they attempted to tell each other's fortunes. And one of the way they would do fortune telling is by bobbing for apples. And what they would do is... Um, they would like, uh, th there's more than one way, but one of the ways is like people would want to find out like w if a woman wanted to like know who her future husband might be. Okay. So she would like, they would like associate each apple with like a different man and she would like bob for apples and the one that she picked out could be like the one who is it she would marry. Or another practice that they would do is they would gra get the, the apple and then they would peel the skin of the apple and then throw the peels of the skin behind them. And supposedly the peels would land in a certain way to create a letter, which would be the, the initials of the person who they would marry, right? This is one of the other ways that these women would try to like tell their future. And again, this wasn't a game. This, they actually, this was real, right? Um, also people wrote messages on pieces of paper in milk, and the notes were then folded and placed into walnut shells. The shells would then be heated over a fire, causing the milk to brown just enough for the message to mystically appear on the paper for the recipient. So this was, again, trying to tell kind of people's fortunes, okay? Oh, that text is small. Okay, jack-o'-lanterns. Maybe the most iconic image of Halloween of a pumpkin with a face carved in it, usually a sinister face. What is the origin of jack-o'-lanterns? So this is based on a legend. Okay, the legend goes that there was one night this drunkard whose name was Jack and he found the devil in a tree. Okay, and so what he did is he carved a cross into the tree and by doing this it prevented the devil from ever coming down from the tree because the devil like, couldn't come down I guess from the tree because the cross was there. Okay, so in exchange for letting Satan climb down Jack had him vow to never claim his soul. So essentially, he told the devil, okay, I will let you climb down if you promise never to take me to hell. Okay? So then Jack lived a sinful life, and when he died, okay, he wasn't allowed into heaven because he was a sinner, but the devil also kept his promise and said, what? I can't accept you into hell either. So it is said about him that he roamed the earth, okay, with this, it, at the time it was a turnip, Okay, Satan upheld his end of the deal, hurling a piece of coal from hell at the dead man. Left without anywhere to go, Jack placed the blazing coal in a turnip to use as a lantern. Right, so it's like this man continued to roam, like not having any place for his soul to be, and he took this piece of coal that the devil threw at him from hell and he put it in a turnip as a lantern. Okay, and he walked around with it forever. Right, this is the origin of the jack o' lantern. 
Okay, this here is an actually one of the, the 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 lanterns that was made from an actual turnip. More commonly, we use today pumpkins. Okay, that we see. So that's that's why you see when you see the pumpkin with the face carved into it, that is um, that is essentially remembering the story of Jack. Okay, and the fire inside of the pumpkin is a coal from hell. Trick or treating evolved from a tradition whereby, oh, this is trick or treating. Trick or treating evolved from a tradition whereby people impersonated the spirits or the souls of the dead and received offerings on their behalf. People would personify the old spirits of the winter who demanded reward in exchange for good fortune. So people who are dressed like these evil things, like, you know, ghosts and so on, they are essentially personifying like the, the evil spirits that are coming, okay, to like, like haunt and, and demanding some offering from the people, okay? So when they go and they essentially trick or treat, what is the trick? The trick is I'm going to like attack you. Like the trick is I'm an evil spirit that is coming to attack you or to, to possess you. And in order for me not to do so, you have to give me an offering. Remember when we said earlier that one of the Celtic practices was that people would offer food outside of their house so that the evil spirits that would come on November 1st wouldn't enter into the house and possess the people. So the concept of trick-or-treating is essentially reenacting this, that the person represents some kind of an evil spirit and he's going to the house and say, if you don't want me to enter into your house and to, to harm you, then you give me something and then I will leave you alone. Okay, so the, what has today become trick-or-treating and about candy and so on originated from this practice. The church, okay, attempted to replace this festival. So as, as the church began to spread and evangelizing into all different parts of the world, they also evangelized to some of these Celtic areas. And so the church now has all of these people that are um, practicing this, and, and now some of them are converting to Christianity. And so the church at the time, what they decided to do was to take some of the practices of the Celtic people and try to transform them into something else. And so they, they called this holiday, they called it All Saints Day, okay? In 609 AD, Pope Boniface IV established the Feast of All Martyrs Day in the Western Church, and Pope Gregory III later expanded the festival to include all saints as well as martyrs and moved the observance from May 13 to November 1st. So the idea of All Saints Day, which is to celebrate the martyrs and the saints of the church, was originally established in 609 AD, and it was on May 13th. And then Pope Gregory III, in order to have it be kind of like a, like a replacement for Samhain festival for the Celtic people, he said, okay, we are going to make this celebration that was on May 13th, that's celebrating the saints and the martyrs, we are going to make it now on the same day as, uh, or, or sorry, on November 1st, which is the day after the Sao, or, or no, that is the, the Samhain festival, okay? Also, another day called All Souls Day was celebrated on November 2nd, similarly to Samhain, with big bonfires, parades, and dressing up in costumes as saints, angels, and devils, okay? So the term Halloween means hallowed evening, which is the night before All Saints Day. So what we have in Halloween is this combined uh, kind of celebration that a lot of the practices of it are from the original pagan Samhain festival, but the name Halloween is actually means hallowed evening or revered evening or holy evening, which is the evening before All Saints Day, okay? But the people are not practicing All Saints Day. The people are celebrating Samhain, essentially, a toned down, distilled version of it, but it's called Halloween, which is the reason it's called that is because the church tried to transform the holiday into something more Christian uh, instead of being pagan. Halloween in America. Okay. When people came from Europe to America, the practices that they would practice came along with them but there were also some mixing with Native Americans and other practices that are here, and it again morphed into something else. 
a distinctly American version of Halloween began to emerge. Colonial Halloween festivities featured the telling of ghost stories and mischief making of all kinds, back to like the trick-or-treating stuff. Americans dressed up in costumes and went house to house asking for food or money, a practice that eventually became today's trick-or-treat tradition. Halloween is a time for scary and demonic movies as well as disturbing imagery and overly sexualized costumes even for little girls. There is an occult, uh, like the, the occult celebrates Halloween, okay? And these are some quotes from uh, Wicca.com. Wicca is the practice of witchcraft, like the actual practice of witchcraft. And so we read what do they say about Halloween. And then also there is some, uh, what, what, the, what the Church of Satan also says about Halloween. On the Wiccan calendar, Samhain is one of the most important points on the wheel of the year. Wiccans believe that it is the day when the god dies, and subsequently they celebrate his rebirth at Yule. So this is a quotation from Wicca.com. Possibly the biggest festival of the witches' year, Samhain, is a time to remember those who have passed on. Samhain is now generally considered the witches' new year. It is generally celebrated on October 31st, but some traditions prefer November 1st. It is one of the two spirit nights each year. It is a magical interval when the mundane laws of time and space are temporarily suspended and the thin veil between the worlds is lifted. This is exactly like Samhain, like what the Celtic people believed, is that the line between uh, the living and the dead is blurred. It is a time to study the dark mysteries and honor the dark mother and the dark father symbolized by the crone and her aged consort, right? So if you go to people who practice witchcraft, they actually celebrate Samhain, which is Halloween, okay? And it's one of their, like, most revered days of the year. Also, the Church of Satan, people who worship Satan, they also uh, celebrate Halloween, and this is what they say. We see this holiday as the night when the mundane folk try to reach down inside and touch the darkness which for Satanists is a daily mode of existence. So he's saying those people who practice Halloween, it's like they're being Satanists for a day. They're trying to like emulate what it's like to, to, be, to be worshiping Satan for a day. Okay? Particularly in the United States, Halloween is a time for celebrating monster films, wearing costumes of macabre nature, and evoking the thrill of fun fear. Children of all ages can indulge their fantasies by donning costumes that allow for intense role-playing and the release of their demonic cores. The parts of their personalities often hidden from their friends, co-workers, and families. Though there are traditions making this an occasion of recalling the dead, it has been popularized, popularized as a time to play with what historically were fears directed towards what were thought to be unquiet spirits of the departed. And the grand traditional question, trick or treat, has become a means for fulfilling an indulgence in sweets without the need to resort to the optional coercion. Meaning, they're taking the original parts of Halloween that were really evil, and they're trying to sugarcoat it and making it to be something fun and entertaining and something that kids want to, to do, and we turn it into like a fun holiday. Okay? Satanists embrace what this holiday has become and do not feel the need to be tied to ancient practices. This night, we smile at the amateur explorers of their own inner darkness, for we know that they enjoy their brief dip into the pool of the shadow world. We encourage their tenebrous fantasies, the candied indulgence, and the wide-ranging evocation of our aesthetics, while tolerating some of the chintzy versions, even if it is but once a year. For the rest of the time, when those not of our meta tribe shake their heads in wonder at us, we can point out that they may find some understanding by examining their own All Hallows' Eve doings. All Hallows' Eve is Halloween. But we generally find it simpler to say, think of the Adams family and you'll begin to see what we're about. So essentially he's saying what, when, 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 when society looks at those who worship Satan and say, how can you worship Satan? How can you be participating in such a thing? And they point back and say, well, it's just like when you practice Halloween. You're doing the same thing, essentially. Okay? That's their response here. So there is this, uh, like, um, I guess, practice, this witchcraft practice called the Hectate 
cauldron purification ritual. Five ways to clear and purify your energy on Samhain. This is one of the things that witches practice on this day. And this is a quote. After casting a circle and calling on divine protection in a way that feels powerful for you, light a black candle to the goddess Hecate. In a notebook or journal, brainstorm all the qualities and conditions you'd like to purify and release from your life. This might include things like fears, unhealthy relationships, compulsive thought patterns, and addictions or unwanted habits. When this feels complete, tear out the pages, place them in a cauldron or pot, and safely use the candle to light them on fire. Thank Hecate. After opening the circle, throw the ashes in a moving body of water or just flush them down the toilet. Let the candle continue to safely burn throughout the night. This is one of the things that can be practiced by witches on that night. The goal of this is to look past the what appears to be innocent, fun-loving activity that maybe many of us growing up have practiced or thought was something innocent um, because we didn't really fully understand it. When you look at the way that it is practiced in society and culture, at least for children, a lot of times you see something that, what's evil? What's evil in this? That, that, doesn't, that doesn't necessarily look like there's some evil origin to it because if it's all like children having fun and wearing costumes and collecting candy. But the idea is, is that there is a reason why this is celebrated on this day. And so we're not trying to say that there's anything wrong with candy and there's anything wrong with costumes. The problem is, is that when this is celebrated on this day, essentially we are celebrating this feast. We are celebrating this feast of Samhain, this pagan feast, that witches and people who worship Satan practice, and we are saying we are participating with you. Yeah, maybe we're not participating by casting spells, and we're not participating by offering sacrifices, but we are participating, right? You know, if we ate candy and wore costumes any other day of the year, there's nothing wrong with that. But this day, this day is a, is a pagan celebration, and essentially we are saying we are coming with you and we're participating this with you. What are some Bible verses relevant to this? In Deuteronomy 18, it says, There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out before you. This is very clear, like even from long, long ago. This is, this is God speaking about the occult. He's speaking about those people who practice magic. Because magic is a real thing. So we're not just talking about magic tricks like you see on TV. There is real magic. There is real demonic power that people wield and they use. Okay? And here God is rejecting this. And he's saying, you shall not find, you, you do not even allow these people to be in your midst. So if God is telling us that we should not even allow these people to be in our midst, then why would I dress up as one of them and go around pretending like I'm one of them? Like, how is it that God would see this, right? Why, why, why would God approve of this? If he says, don't even let these people be among you. In Leviticus 19, he says, Give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. And in Isaiah 520, he says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And this is like the mantra of our society today. Our society takes what is evil and it sugarcoats it and wraps it and puts a bow around it and then presents it to us and say, this is good. And the things that are truly good, they demonize it and say, this is evil. For you to condemn sin, this is evil, this is judgment, this is hatred, this is bigotry. But to those things that are actually evil, we practice them and say, well, what's the big deal with this? Everyone is doing, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with this. I'm not hurting anyone by doing this, right? This is the way that society tries to skew and destroy and warp God's command. I'll give you another example that I always use because it's a very subtle one and maybe a lot of us haven't even thought about it. Pirates, okay? When we think of the word pirate today, we usually think of the movie Pirates of the Caribbean, or we think about some Disney movie that exalts pirates and pirates are fun-loving and they love to sing and they do things. 
Most people today, when you think of the word pirate, that's what you think of. But what is a pirate? A pirate is a thief and a robber and a pillager and a rapist. Like that is what a pirate is. A pirate is someone who, who, who takes someone's property and kills you and takes it from you. And before Disney came along, that's the only understanding of pirates that people had. For some reason, Disney saw these pirates and said, you know what, we're going to make these to be good guys. We're going to make them nice and friendly. We're going to make them the good guys. We're going to make them dress nice. We're going to make them sing songs. And we're not going to show them necessarily looting or destroying, although in some cases they do, and we root them on. And now these are the pirates, right? This is taking something that is evil, that if a real pirate ever came to me, they would try to kill me and harm me. And yet in our society, we now talk about pirates in a positive, happy way. They have taken what is evil and they have turned it into good. And actually in these movies, like if you watch the movie Pirates of the Caribbean, for instance, we are rooting on the pirates. We want the pirates to win. The police are, are portrayed as the bad guys. The, poli the ones that are trying to keep the actual order and follow the laws, those are the bad guys. Those are the corrupt, bad people that you want to lose in the movie. But the pirates, the ones that steal things that are other people, we, those are the exciting ones. Those are the ones we like to win. Okay? This is another example of the same pattern where the society takes something that is evil and packages it in a way that makes it to be good. And, and, and not only so, but anyone who stands up against this and points out the obvious, it's like, this is a day for worshiping Satan. This is, this is a day for, for, for offering sacrifices to pagan gods. This is a day where we believe that these evil spirits are coming to earth and we're dressing up like them. The same things that God told us not to have in our midst, these are the things that we ourselves are willingly being dressed up as and, ex and happy about this, right? But because we are so used to this in our society and because maybe many of us grew up and this was just some common practice and we have good memories of our childhood and these things, we, we look past this. We, 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 we kind of say, yeah, but I never did any of that stuff. I never, I never cast spells. I never prayed to the devil. I never did any of that. But this is, this is, this is a mockery. Right? This is a mockery of God, what we are participating in in this, in this holiday of Halloween. Even the word holiday, right? the word holiday comes from the word holy day. Holy day, right? That's why, that's why we call it holiday, right? And certainly Halloween is not a holiday. If someone were to describe to you a holiday of a different name with all the characteristics above, would you want to participate in it? Like, if, if I gave you all the characteristics of everything about this day, about the witches and the demons and the practices and the, and, and the ghosts and, 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 and all of this, but I didn't call it Halloween. I said, you know what, let's, let's introduce a new uh, holiday that we in the church are going to practice, and here are all the characteristics of this day. I think everyone would agree that we want nothing to do with this day, that this is a demonic day. But when we take that same day and we call it Halloween, now all of a sudden it's different. Because in my mind, the term Halloween maybe has a positive connotation because maybe I have a positive memory of it in the past. The idea here is let's look at it for the facts of what it actually is. Not how we feel toward it, not the way we grew up, what it actually is, right? As a matter of fact and by looking at the history. And I encourage all of you to go and research on your own and find more information and more details about this day. Don't be deceived by warm memories. The devil deceives us by presenting evil as innocent fun. This is the way he gets us to participate in it. We do not condemn the idea of dressing in costumes or collecting candy, but we do condemn the practice of Halloween and want to distance ourselves from it as much as we can. In 2 Corinthians 6, it says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? Right? All throughout the scripture, Christ, God, is telling us, you are going to stand out from other people. Don't just do what everybody does. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Even if everyone around us is practicing this, does this mean it is good for me to practice it? right? It is our role, it is our Christian duty to stand up for the truth, for what is right, and even if we get backlash, and even people mock us, and people don't understand why is it that we don't practice this, 
tell them, this is why we don't practice it. This is a demonic day. This is a day for, for worshiping Satan. This is, this, is, this, is, this is a day, and speak about the origin of it. Make people understand why. We're, it's not like we're avoiding this day because we're fanatics. Even a secular person, if they understand the origin of this day, I think many would be uncomfortable with it, right? Because it's, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to understand what is this holiday that we are participating in. Does anybody have any comments or questions about this? Yes. I don't know like why it's more or less popular in different places around the world. It's my understanding that people even starting to practice it in Egypt. Uh, so, so hmm? yeah, they don't know, right? So even places, and, and I think to a large extent, because like the the colonial the colonial founders of the United States, at least those people who came from Europe, they were Christians, right? And for instance, if you think about the Puritans, or you think about those people that were very religious, like you know. The idea that they would practice such a thing, I don't know specifically which groups of those would practice this or not, but I, I want to say that it's more just like we took some practice that we were used to doing without fully understanding it, and now we're just beginning to adopt it. So perhaps people in Europe had a better understanding of the origin of it, which is why less people practiced it. I don't know. Um, but I would say probably in, in Europe today, a lot of people practice it now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, yeah, Halloween was a thing, but it wasn't to the level that it is now. Like today, it's like they're pushing it almost to eventually supersede Christmas as being like such a holiday. Every year, I feel there's more emphasis on it. There's more emphasis on it uh, because, yeah, people make a lot of money, you know, off of these holidays. So I think different people have different reasons why they celebrate it. You know, the corporations, they don't care about anything. All they care about is the money. The, the pagan people, they do celebrate it as a religious holiday. And the Christians are just kind of like, okay, it's fun, you know. So maybe everybody practices it for a different reason. But, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure about that. Yeah. 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 Man, which is why the All Saints Day was placed on this day because it was supposed to be a, like something to counteract the original meaning and even the term halloween is the christian word right so it's 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 confusing uh we were talking yesterday about the day of the dead the day of the dead is a celebration in mexico which is also corresponding to halloween where they also it's like a mixture of christian belief and of pagan belief and so anyone coming to practice this, it's like you have to go really understand, like, what, are, what is this? You know, like, for instance, in the Day of the Dead, they make altars in their homes with food. So believing that the spirits of dead family members come to their house and you're like welcoming them into your house by offering food, which as Christians, we don't believe this. But there is a Christian component to the day where you are like praying for the dead and remembering the dead, you know. So a lot of times these days, are like a mixture of all kinds of different things and it's confusing to fully like understand how it all came to be. So there's there's obviously different opinions about what to do. Um, in historically in the church, when there have been like uh, pagans that have been converted to Christianity you know, in large numbers, there have been situations where the church would actually take the pagan temple that the people were using to to pray to the idols and they would like essentially bless it with holy water and they would turn it into a church, right? 
So let's go one approach. Like take what is pagan and what we call baptize it and to make it something that is holy. Another view, and, and actually that's why like His Grace Bishop Yusuf, when he speaks about having alternate uh, activities on this day, he, he says we're not going to distribute candy and we're not going to wear costumes. Why? Not because, again, costumes and candy is wrong. It's because in the mind of children who don't understand, to them this is just Halloween again. Like we're wanting to make a, dif a distinction between what we practice and what everyone else practices. So by saying we're not going to have the costumes and we're not going to have the candy, it's going to be in the mind of the child. This is something distinctly unique and different from what we are doing everywhere else. This is not Halloween in the church. This is All Saints Day. Even though historically there have been people that have rest in costumes like angels and so on. This is not, uh, th th this, is, this is like an opinion about what we feel is the best approach to put the right mindset in the child who's very young and doesn't fully understand all of this. Okay, so again, there's different uh, views and different approaches. Yes. Exactly. It's the same concept. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and that's a that's a complex question. And I think every child is different in the way that you um, explain it to them. What I have found has been um, successful, at least for me, is that when our children are young, Every time they see any kind of Halloween imagery, we make them a little bit afraid of it to the point where they on their own just are afraid of that. Like every time they see someone doing anything Halloween related with skeletons and ghosts and witches and all of that, they, they naturally just feel repelled by it. And we can give them candy anytime, you know, like, like we, we, we give them the candy. Like they don't have to feel like Halloween has anything exciting or 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 so favoring to them like something that they want to do so my opinion about that is every time there's any kind of halloween imagery you you you, you make a comment to them about how you don't like that and that's really bad and you want to avoid that and over time i think it begins to develop in their mind to when on their own they begin to see it that way like i'll speak about my daughter for instance when she starts to see now uh, like Halloween decorations in the neighborhood, like in the house around us, every single time almost we see it, she's like, oh, I don't like Halloween, you know, because because she's afraid of those images because I have helped her to be afraid of them <laughs> um, over time, right? So I think the more something just becomes normal and natural that we just see on an everyday basis, then kids are fine with it because it's normal. But when the parents begin to make them feel nervous about it, just like what? Don't talk to strangers, you know? And the more we tell them, don't talk to strangers, when they see strangers, they just run because there's a stranger. I don't want to be anywhere near stranger because my parents told me that this is bad. So I think that begins to develop their thought process that Halloween has dangerous aspects. They're not going to understand all of this. So I don't think talking about all of this is necessarily, at least at the very young age, going to be helpful. It's more just, I, I, I'm, you know, mom and dad have said this is bad and it's bad for me. So even though I don't know what it is, I'm just, I want to stay away from it. Let's pray. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. We thank you, O God, for this day, and we thank you for all the blessings that you give us. We thank you, O God, because of your goodness and kindness and because you call us to holiness. Help us, O Lord, to live a holy life, one that is undefiled and consecrated, O Lord, to you. Help us, O Lord, to choose to do what is holy and not to go after what is sinful or wicked. Grant us, O Lord, discernment and how to raise our children in your fear so that we can serve them, O Lord, and be a good example to them and know, O Lord, how to teach them and raise them, O Lord, in the right way. Protect us, O Lord, from all defiling environmental circumstances in the places that we live, with those people that we work with, in everything, O Lord, that is around us that seeks, O Lord, to infiltrate our minds and to win our minds to wicked thoughts. Help us, O God, to remain pure in your eyes. And help us, O Lord, to always serve you and to be thankful for every good work you have done. 
through the prayers of St. Mary, Archangel Michael, St. Paul, St. Mark, and all your saints, hear us as we pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The love of God the Father, the grace of the only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion and the gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.